Hello lovely butterflies, welcome to this week 136 journal on Monday. This is what it's all about today. And this is the spread that I made for uh, the week 16 of the ALA challenge, which is the A Layer A Day challenge. So I had five minutes a day to put on a layer in my journal every day. And by the end of the week, this is the spread that, that I ended up with. And I was actually talking to my inner critic while making this spread because that's what, what uh, this challenge was all about. If you haven't heard about the challenge yet, check out my blog. Um, check out the France Papillon and Creative Butterflies Facebook group where we share everything, every layer that we put down every day. I will link down everything below and see you at the end of the video because I have something else to tell you. I'm working in my journal on Monday art journal and I already have some texture going on. That's the leftover uh, texture paint that I had from an upcoming video. So I just covered it with a little bit of gesso to tone down that dark gray. I wanted the texture, but not the dark gray color. And as this layer dried like instantly, I cheated on day one and I already added a second layer. So my second layer is a little bit of crackle medium, just applied here and there where I don't have enough texture going on yet. The good thing about this challenge is that I put down my layer and then I just walk away and I leave it to dry naturally. Not only does that save me a lot of time because I'm not spending drying time at my table, but on top of things I have beautiful crackles. Layer 2 is a little bit of cambric, which is a gauze. So far I've only found it in Belgium. This is 100% cotton. Uh, you can pull it to all sides, it will just keep it square little shape, um, which is something that I really like. So I'm just adding little pieces here and there, again, where I don't have crackle going on or where I don't have any of that gray texture already going on. I'm sticking it down with some gesso because I already applied gesso on my paper and I want it to react in the same way than the gesso that's already on the paper when I come in with color. Day three, so far everything is dry. I'm spraying some water because I want to use my fluid acrylic in a very liquid way. Not really like watercolor, but I do want it to move around. So in my one hand I have my spray bottle, in my other hand I have my print brush, and as you can see I'm playing around with both. In my head, my inner critic was telling me how often I was going for these same colors lately, which is Phthalo Turquoise and obviously Queen Gold. Um, and just because she was saying that, 
just because that little voice was saying that. I just had to use these colors again, just to make my point that I can do whatever I want, right? So day five, I grabbed my Quin Gold and I did the exact same thing, playing around with my paintbrush and with the water on the other side, just because it's a very fun thing to do. Not only is it very relaxing to play around that way, but it's also given me the effect that I'm looking for. So be quiet in a critic, just let me have fun. And as I had some paint left over, I decided to add some splatters with that same Quin Gold, but then I didn't have enough paint to add splatters, so I needed to add some more paint, and that is how you keep playing. Again, I left it to dry. Next day, day six, I'm coming back in with the Quin Gold just to make my point to my inner critic that I can do what I want. And if I feel like using Quin Gold, that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I decided to intensify that rusty effect by going in with the Quin Gold, using barely some water, just here and there, some, some very light touches. So I'm really using the uh, fluid acrylic um, in its pure form now. Day seven and final day, I decided to come back in with raw sienna, just to accentuate that rust effect that I had going on by adding a color gradient to that rusty color and not just having that um, intense orangey from the Quin Gold. So this time I'm using quite some water again to dilute it and to make it move around. And of course, while I'm at it, some more splatters again with that raw sienna color. I set it aside to leave it to dry by itself. 
And meanwhile, I used one of my perfect word stems, which, uh, which says perfectly imperfect, which I thought matched this week's challenge perfectly. That's a lot of perfects in one sentence. Um, and also that little numbers stamp that I have on my perfect word stamp, which I absolutely love and I could add just everywhere. But one has to limit oneself. This is from the Rock and Rust set. It's actually just a row of a row. Oh, that's a hard word to say. A row of numbers, and I'm using it to um, add like frame kind of stamping around my page. I'm just trimming the little word that I want to use, scraping the edges. adding a little bit of ink to it and some stamping as well. And I'm using a very light color, just not to overwhelm the whole thing, just to make the paper look less white and perfect. I'm using a little bit of distress ink on the edges and now I can mount everything together. So again, a piece of cambric, this time I'm just using it in its white form. and a little bit of black thread as well to make it pop from the background. Then I saw this eeny meeny tiny little heart on my desk, which is a leftover from my uh, Hochanda Show kits, which Tando Creative made for me. This is really, really small. Um, and I decided to add it. So I just glued it down and then painted it with some red paint. Again, I used the fluid acrylic from Deco Art Media. Now this is where I made a mistake. I picked up my paintbrush from the water and there was still a lot of water into it. And as you can see, the red paint was just running everywhere because of the water. So I had to stick it down again, which was not easy because meanwhile the gray board was completely wet. But I managed. I thought it might be a good idea to film it in close up, but my camera didn't agree. I'm sorry for that. That's it for today but I still have one more thing to tell you. So as you can see from the video, making the spread and talking to my inner critic was going pretty fluently. There was no big hurdle to overcome or anything. Um, there was no doubt about the next layer or whatsoever. She kept talking to me and I kept answering in my own little way. But when I look back to the spread, I realized that it was actually more of a fight than I thought. And this is what I like about art journaling. It's that your journal talks back to you. If you take the time to look into it and to interpret what the page is telling you, it might give you an insight on things you have to look at for yourself, to work on for yourself, to pay attention to for yourself. So this page made me realize a couple of things and I hope you will take the time to not only join us for the challenge, uh, but also to read back what your art journaling has to tell you because that's what art journaling is all about see you back next time ta-da